Jackson. And I'm Dylan. And, and this, this is Wacky, Wacky News. News. <laughs> Welcome to Wacky News. My name is Dylan. This is a podcast for kids, about kids, and presented to you by kids. My brother Jackson and I will share neat stories every week for you to discuss with your friends on the school bus, during lunch, or whenever you want. Hi guys, it's me Jackson. I'm so happy it's Friday. Woohoo! Time for the weekend! Wow Jackson, tell us how you really feel. Can't help it, I just love weekends. No school, later bedtimes, sleepovers. Weekends are the best. Well, except for the fact that there's no wacky news on the weekend. You're right, Dylan. So we'd better make today's episode extra awesome to get everybody through the next few days until Monday's episode. What do you say, Wacky News Machine? Can you find us something cool to report on? Mindful Moments Punishment for children in schools over the year has evolved. In the early 1900s, kids who acted out in class would have to stand in the corner while wearing a cone-shaped hat with the word dunce on it. Timothy, go stand in the corner! In later years, teachers would spank students with a paddle or slap their hands with the ruler if kids were out of line. (laughs) More recently, kids have been given detention or been suspended or expelled from school. Detention is where a student has to stay at school after regular school hours. And to be suspended means that you're not allowed to go to school anywhere from a day to several weeks. Being expelled means that the student cannot return to that school ever, ever again. But studies are indicating that none of these approaches are as effective as school systems would like. Research has shown that physically punishing children at school creates anger, resentment, and low self-esteem in students. It teaches them violence and revenge as ways to handle problems. On the other hand, the non-physical punishments have also proven to have negative effects. According to Assemblymen from California, kids who have been suspended or expelled are two times more likely to jump out and five times more likely to turn to crime. So what are schools supposed to do? Not punish kids if they misbehave? Actually, yes, kind of. In the hopes of promoting good behavior, schools in the United States have been turning to yoga and meditation instead of detention and suspension. Um. What does that even mean? Well, for example, the Robert W. Coleman Elementary School and West Baltimore has partnered with the Holistic Life Foundation to teach kids healthy ways to deal with trauma, anger, and stress. Students begin each morning by being led in the breathing exercises over the PA system. During the day, they have access to a soothing space called the Mindful Moment Room if they misbehave or interrupt class. The atmosphere, or feel, of the room is calming and peaceful and encourages mindfulness. There are comfy bean bags and cushions and nice lighting from all the pretty salt lamps. Staff from the Holistic Life Foundation teach the students breathing and centering exercises while in the room. And at the end of the day, in addition to the regular after-school programs, kids are offered yoga classes. That all sounds pretty cool, but does it work? So far, it does. In the 2013 to 2014 school year, Coleman Elementary had zero suspensions. Yay! That's awesome. We are going to include pictures, videos, and links to the Holistic Life Foundation under our show notes for episode 18. Be sure to go to podcastplayground.com and click on Wacky News to find the show notes. While you are there, you can also leave us a message on the Wacky Request line. Tell us if there are any news topics you would like us to cover or share with us what you are going to be for Halloween. We will try to share as many messages on the air as possible. And feel free to tell us your favorite joke. We might include it for a future episode as part of the Wacky Jokes. Speaking of Wacky Jokes, let's talk about our sponsoring then get straight to the funnies.
Music for More is a really great charity organization that launched in 2009 with the goal of helping schools that don't have enough money or instruments to offer students a music program. It's hard to believe that some schools don't even have music programs at all. Studies have proven that music helps kids in so many ways. Those ways include being more engaged in school, developing creativity, better SAT scores, increased coordination, and so much more. Music for More collects donated instruments from musicians and gives them to schools in need. They also hold a lot of special events like concerts and things to raise money for schools to improve their music programs. For more information, go to music, the number four, more.com. That's musicformore.com, using just the number four, not spelling it out. And now it's time for... Wacky Jokes! What do you call a person who can't flip pancakes? A flip-flop. <laughs> Why did the turkey cross the road? It was the chicken's day off. <laughs> Yeah, why do vampires use red markers? So they can draw blood. <laughs> what do you get when you cross a crow with a hippo? A lot of broken telephone lines. <laughs> why can't you keep secrets in a bank? Because of all the tellers. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Stop watch. Stop watch who? Stop what you're doing and download Wacky News right now. <laughs> and that's the end of episode 18, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to visit the Wacky News show notes at podcastplayground.com to learn more about today's news story. And also subscribe to Toothy Trivia while you are there. No more rushing or brushing. That's it for today. Thank you so much. Guys, have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.